So just look at lead AVF. It's a very good lead. Look at lead AVF. Look at lead limb lead three. So how many morphologies of these P waves you are seeing in this patient? How many morphologies? What do you think? What about this P wave? What about this P wave? What about this yeah. P wave? Do you think it's, it's same or they are varying? Okay, Very so good. the these some of them are do look similar, but they're different morphologies too. Also, this P pulmonility uh, looks a little bigger. Um, but you you see, there's some other piece that are different from the other ones. For example, yes. in the yes. bottommost. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yes, you're right. This P waves look different. See, this P wave look different. But the thing is, uh, you have to see all the leads. So look at lead limb lead two because this is a good lead for the P waves. So do you do you think it's very grossly irregular? Look at the tricky cycle length. It's so irregularly irregular, or it's pretty regular with a bit of variation. What do you think? Do you think it's very irregular? Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. Yes, it's not. Look at over here. There's a bit of because of so there's something going on. But it's more not that irregular, irregular which you are used to seeing in MAD. Okay, so they are a bit of regular, and yes, there is definitely something uh, uh, happening with the P waves. But can you find three or more P wave morphologies in any single trace? Obviously, there will be a bit of variation, so it's not pretty uh, uh, kind of a mirror image. So there will be a bit of variation, but you think that they are so much different in the amplitude and morphology, at least on this ECG. Obviously, we are seeing these ECGs. So you are right. Uh, he's having atrial ectopics. These are ectopics. Uh, and when these happen, then there is irregularity. You see that? Over here, this came and the R came earlier. Over here, this came, there was a pause. There's no R. And then again, a P wave came and then started. You appreciate this point? So, okay. you understand yes. this point? So, it's not yeah. always that every fast is, is mad. Okay. So, what happened, what was happening was that Sometimes it was atrial topic coming, which was conducting into R, and sometimes it was blocking into the ventricles. You appreciate that? Yeah. This was conducting, this was blocking. But whenever the sinus P wave was coming, it was conducting. There was no change in PR, not a gross change in P wave morphologies. So he was having palpitations. It can be an inappropriate sinus cardiac. So IST is a very common uh, uh, scene in health professionals. We used to see a lot of ISTs because of anxiety and taking a lot of nicotines and coffees and all those stuffs. So uh, the, the important is uh, for a MAD, although I gave you a history that was more suggestive of MAD, but I wanted you to look at these PVs very carefully. So these were uh, P waves, sinus P waves, along with atrial ectopics, which was coming from lower down, probably from uh, the coronary sinus. But they, they definitely, you do not want to localize in your case. You just have to identify the ectopics. So some these were conducted and non-conducted atrial ectopics. So you have to manage them accordingly. So palpitations can be because of many reasons. Inappropriate sinus tachycardia is again one reason. So lots of soft drinks, smoking, and all these, they can again trigger up IST as well. But uh, uh, I, I think uh, the best diagnosis will be in atrial ectopics, not a mat. I hope uh, this clears now. So okay. you agree with that? This is just, more, just to show you that uh, uh, think uh, like, uh, systematically and just don't jump to the diagnosis because it's irregular and all this stuff's going on. Okay, you have to uh, clearly. MAT usually doesn't come in the exams. Usually, and this also doesn't come in the exams, but you never know. 
sometimes they can trigger atrial tachycardia so it can be at with just like in these triggers so okay so i think i have shown you now zoom in to see it more clearly okay so the mind it uh, the sinus node morphology even can change uh, with beats to beats so it's just to do with the uh, exit of the sinus okay but i'll not go into that because that will be uh, more boring and this is not required at your case so just stick uh, with uh, always look for the atrial ectopics try to rule out if af atrial tachycardia obviously mat and atrial ectopics as well okay now this is a very very uh, important case so i i saw this case and it was a very good case so i'm not sure how many of you have seen this ecg anybody who can comment on this this can come in the exam because it's a spot diagnosis so it's a broad complex tachycardia which um, looks a little irregular and there is a pre excited element to it so could so, it be yeah uh, uh, could yes. it be pre excited af perfect yes this is a pre excited af good so uh, you see this is spot diagnosis so this is a wide complex tachycardia so these are the differentials if they ask you the differentials okay so just write these differentials so af with right bundle because you are seeing right bundle over here polymorphic vts yes any wide irregular complex polymorphic vt will come into play pre excited af and svt with aberrancy okay svt like at with aberrancy at will be irregular it's not always the case that it will be regular so these are the four differentials in this scenario so now you have to see you have to rule out uh, the the differentials based on findings so although you pick the finding tightly but uh, i'll just show you what's happening so you see this is the spiri we have discussed earlier very short r intervals probably it's around 300 i cannot see the boxes over here but it's pretty fast you see the, the, in the previous lecture you have seen that afa with left bundle branch block that was not so fast but here you can see the pathway conducting very fast okay and look at this slurring so there is a beat to beat variation so why a beat to beat variation will occur in the left bundle it will not occur in the left bundle it will only occur when there is a because the preferential conduction to the pathway node pathway node pathway so any gross bizarre wide irregular shortest uh pre excited rr or shortest rr is very short less than 250 milliseconds then this means that uh, always think of the pathway because uh, svt with the berency will never conduct so fast it is not possible for a left bundle to conduct at 300 beats per minute impossible for that okay that will be a super bundle in that case but does doesn't happen so uh, okay this this will uh, kind of take out the uh, svt with the berency okay now other thing is that uh, uh, look at the slurring okay because this slurring will help you in picking up the conduction to the pathway okay and uh, how will you take out polymorphic vt in this case so what points goes against a polymorphic vt oh once uh, so one it's irregular like uh, sorry it is irregular it is definitely irregular you can see it's very irregularly irregular there is no fixed pattern in any anywhere so uh, definitely yeah, very, variability in the qrs to qrs sir sorry variable so qr variable qrs is the uh, but be, but this is also uh, just like alternates uh you are right you are almost there so 
shift of axis. So you can see the, the torsads, the polymorphic VT, there is a shift of axis. But here, can you see any shift of axis? The complex which are upwards or upwards. It is not change, it's not changing. It is not twisting around the baseline. Positive, negative, positive, negative. It's pretty fixed over there. I hope you can appreciate that. Okay. So uh, these are the features uh, that you have to write in this case. So it's a very rapid ventricular rate. There is irregularity. There is a changing QRS morphology. You see, the morphology is not fixed. Sometimes it's white, sometimes it's pretty sharp. You see, it's very bizarre and it's pretty sharp. So there is a uh, changing QRS morphology and why it happens because of the fusion. Because sometimes conduction is through the node, sometimes it's through the pathway and stirring, you, as you've seen that stirring is because of the pathway. So it's a changing QRS morphology. The white QRS uh, complexes obviously because of this AP conduction and beat to beat variation in QRS morphology or because obviously this and axis remains stable. So because of the axis, the polymorphic VT is not like, it's pretty uh, fixed over there. If it's positive, it's positive. If it's negative, it's negative. Okay. So you have to write these features whenever you get pre-excited AF and you want to differentiate from others. So the differentials uh, were these four. Just remember these differentials and the features. And okay, so now how will you manage this patient? So this patient is largely dependent. Yeah. Sorry? So if the patient is hemodynamically stable, mm -hmm. we can give the patient propionamide or ibutylide. And if the patient is um, what I mean, standing okay, unstable, so obviously we'll have to DC cardiac. Okay, good. Any other drug? What about amiodron? This is the most commonly available. Uh, or... So am amiodron has AV nodal blocking property, and it's yeah. not recommended because it's going to break up into a ventricular fibrillation. Okay, good. So I've discussed this over here. So amiodron, yes, amiodron uh, cause procainamide, butylide. It's not available, I think, in Pakistan, as far as I know. So amidron is the most commonly available drug. And sometimes we have more tendency towards giving this amidron because this is the only antirhythmic, I think, that is more commonly used. So uh, amidron has both properties of blocking the pathway, but also affects the node. So there is a chance that patient might degenerate into VF. So it's not... Uh, favorite drug to be given. So uh, you have to give, this is the best drugs are butylite and procainamide. So procainamide is a class one antirhythmic that targets the accessory pathway. It prolongs the action potential in the atrium and the ventricle and is no AV nodal blocking. So it's a safe drug. A butylite, a class three antirhythmic, it's again a class three. But uh, it, it what happens is it uh, blocks the IKR channels and prolongation of the repolarization in the atria. So it prolongs the conduction to the atria. Obviously, there is a slowing through the atria. So it will not sustain an atrial fibrillation. Okay. But unfortunately, this drug is given intravenously. So it should be given intravenously. So what Side effect, can you see in a butylite? When you give a butylite, what care should you take in that patient? So you have given the butylite, you have terminated the tachycardia, but how will you treat uh, that patient? These are also, now this is again a it question. Is, yes. yes. Security yes. prolongation. Very well. Well, done. well done. So look at the QT because if you prolong the QT, that will give you a polymorphic VT and then life is again in trouble. So you'll treat one with Mia and then you'll land, land yourself in the trouble again. So uh, <laughs> be wary of QT as well. Okay, so that's why we call it anti, every anti-rhythmic is an, again an rhythmic. So good. Okay, I think uh, this is good enough uh, at this level, not more than that, it's required.
I think. So, uh, I think should we give a pause and then we start, or you just want me to continue on? I think we give a pause, or you're happy to continue me forward because there are a few, I think, more scenarios. Should we continue? Uh, yes, sir. Please continue. Okay. I think everybody agrees to continue. <laughs> I hope they're not sleeping. <laughs> okay, no issue. 34 year old female who presents with palpitations for three months. So, uh, give your shots on this. I'll give you a few seconds. Have a look because this is again a very, very interesting ECG. And uh, then I'll discuss this. Okay, so any thoughts what's happening? Somebody had said fascicular VT. It's a right bundle. Obviously, it's a right bundle tachycardia. It's a broad, doesn't look to be a narrow. So, and 34 years old, she is a pretty young lady. So there, there is a hint, there is a clue. If you pick that clue, uh, you might pick up the answer as well. So no one- It does look like to be, uh, this is a broad complex tachycardia, fairly regular RV pathology coming from LVOT. This looks like a VT, LVOT VT. Okay. So everyone, uh, sports VT. Okay, let me give you a hint. Okay, I'll give you some uh, zoom in view. So this these might be the questions that uh, might be asked. So the thing is just you have to pick uh, the findings, the rest is pretty easy. So now look at this. Now what do you think is happening? So I zoom in on lead V1. So there are some humps. You can see that humps. Uh, you can see them over here as well. And they are definitely not part of a QRL. Right. What do you think about this? Are these retrograde P waves? Yes. Yes. I think this is the best P waves you can see. Uh, this cannot be QRS. This cannot be T. This T cannot be so small and so sharp. Okay. And this definitely can't be a part of QRS even as well. Okay. So the, the thing is always look for P waves. In a wide complex tachycardia, Always, always look for a P wave. And when you find a P wave, then it's, it kind of make your life easier now. So what do you think now? You still want to go with the VT? Can Obviously VT, not, yeah. Can VT present with so fast one-to-one -one conduction? I know. Unlikely. SVT so what, with a... so what SVT will present like this? So uh, you have seen yeah, so SVT. Every... AVRT or antidromic? Yes, it's it's antidromic AVRT. You are right. This is antidromic AVRT. So the thing is, the conduction was going through the pathway. So the conduction was going to the pathway anti-gradely. So what was happening is you can see. So it's a right bundle. So it's more a left-sided pathway. One AVL is negative. So this means the left free wall is. Yes. The free wall is predominantly getting activated. So this was an antidromic AVRT. I hope you know what antidromic AVRT is. Yeah. 
So endotomic AVRT, I'll just give you a brief uh, outline for that. So the thing is, the orthodromic AVRT means the anti-grade conduction is the node and the retrograde conduction is the pathway. So in the orthodromic AVRT, it comes down the node and goes through the pathway. This is an orthodromic AVRT. What happens in antidromic? There is, I'm sorry for the drawing, I'm not good at drawing. But the thing is, for antidromic, it's integrate to the pathway and retrograde to the node. So it's the opposite. So what happens is that it was going to the free ball pathway and then was coming back to the node. And that's why you were seeing these retrograde uh, P waves, which you have to see in the inferior leads because these are best leads to see that. So the retrograde P waves means that conduction is going from down to up. So this was antidromic. We just changed the activation pattern. That's the same. So we have a node, we have a pathway. So when the anti-grade is through all, all through the pathway, it will give you a pre-excitation, fully pre-excited uh, QRS. That's what we use C over here. So the thing is, uh, antidromic AVRT, you have to differentiate from VTs. So VT will not conduct so fast. VA dissociation is not being seen in this ECG. So this was uh, antidromic AVRT. Okay, any questions? All clear? Okay, you see over here. Okay, now let's move forward. How do you treat endotomic AVRT, by the way? So just ablate the pathway, break the circuit. Just ablate the pathway and endotomic AVRT is gone. Okay. So now, uh, this is an asymptomatic 56 years old who came for pre-op evaluation. So what are the findings? What will you do and will you manage it or you will clear this patient? So, any thoughts on this? Yeah, this, uh, this is, is a bradycardia. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so, the patient uh, has bradycardia. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, this uh, this clearly is a bradycardic ECG with 2 is to 1 AV block and in with infrahesian conduction because the QRS appeared to be broadened. We cannot clear the patient for surgery. We'll have to evaluate and probably uh, look him up for a treatment. Okay, good. So he's asymptomatic. So uh, you're saying he's having infranodal disease and two into one AV block. Yes? Yes. So uh, does every infranodal conduction disease suggests that two into one block is uh, uh, kind of infranodal, all infranodal, or it can be nodal as well? Uh, we, uh, we have to look at the QRS complex. If if the conduction is infrahesian, then, then obviously that means that it's below the node. Okay. So, okay. So there are some features which you look uh, you're right. This is a two into one AV block. So let me show you. I have marked them with the arrows. So you can see the P waves over here. So the bradycardia was because of this P waves. They were not conducting. So these P waves were not conducting and there was an alternate pattern for that. So two into one AV block can both be uh, nodal and infranodal. There are some parameters one of them we have discussed it, but there are some other parameters as well. Okay, so I'll discuss that. So it's a two into one AV block. So it, it is important because you have to make a distinction whether it's a nodal or infranodal. So what to do next? 
So what would you like to do in this case? Uh, in treadmill, sir. Good. Exercise. Great. Great. Anything else? Look for evidences. So what evidences? One, you think uh, this is a right bundle. That's right. So infernodal disease is there. So definitely there is some kind of infernodal disease going on with this patient. So these are the parameters. Okay. So whenever there's a two into one AV block, with a narrow QRS, not in this case, but if it comes with a narrow QRS, it can be with a narrow QRS. So what will you do in that case? So if it's a narrow, it can still be a infernodal. But with a wide QRS, it is more likely to be infernodal, but it could still be at the level of AV node. Okay. So these uh, books all do say that, that wide QRS complex uh, can be uh, infant uh, noodle, but at the level of node as well. So we're not going to details. Just remember a few things. Um, uh, they can also help you further. That is correct. Sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. So now look at the PR intervals. Okay. We'll discuss that. Just we are discussing these points. We'll discuss apply these points in the CG as well. So look at the PR intervals. If the PR interval is shorter than 160, this suggests infranodal disease. Very long PR suggests AV nodal level block. So these are the cutoffs for that. Okay. If the PR interval of all the conducted complexes is constant despite a varying RP, infranodal block is likely. Unfortunately, you have to remember these points. There is no trick. You have to remember, you have to apply. It's just applying again and again. That's uh, when you are kind of knowing all these facts. But you have to uh, apply a majority of these to go for the right diagnosis. Because nodal block, you will not do anything. Infranodal, you have to put a pacemaker. Mind it, he was asymptomatic. So PR interval is constant. Pairing RP, infranodal disease is likely. Venky back, if you see holter tracings or tracing on other CGs which show a Venky back, this is AV nodal. Okay. So look for evidences of Benki back elsewhere as well. And the one exercise, atropine or exercise, if it gets improved, it's an AV nodal block. And if it gets worsened, this is a node, a infranodal disease. Okay, node and infranodal below, not above the node. And the third, the last point is do a massage, perotid massage, which is the most easier thing to do on the bedside. And what will you see in a perotid massage? If you do a carotid massage with two into one and it improves, so what does this mean? It's a nodal disease, right? Oh, sure about that. Just think, uh, think why I'm asking this question. Oh, no, okay, no, it means it's infranodal because uh, with the carotid massage, the parasympathetic stimulation would would get activated, right? So. Um, a, a nodal disease is supposed to worsen with it and an infrahysian is supposed to get improved. Yes. So th this is opposite to the exercise. So just remember opposite to the exercise. Okay. So I'll discuss uh, in the ECGs. So now let's apply these concepts on the ECGs. So what do you think? This is the first point. So we have discussed, already discussed this first point. So it's he's having right bundle, but we have seen that in the literature the right complex is not always uh, the, uh, the infernodal. Not put that much that we need to put in a pacemaker. Commonly, it suggests infernodal. Okay. In your case, if it comes, you uh, write infernodal and they might expect you to write uh, the pacemaker just for the exam. And obviously, but at, uh, at different level, because uh, clinically, you have to be very clear dealing these patients. He's putting in a pacemaker uh, without any purpose is again not a justifying thing to do. So we have discussed this point. Let's move forward. Fix 2 into 1 block with PR interval shorter than 160. So what do you think? It's shorter than 160 or more than 160 or what? what do it's you short. Think? It's short. Uh, I think look at the piece. It's shorter than 160. So 
probably this is one, two, three, four. So it's around 160. Not that short, not that short. Obviously, it's not more than 300. So compared to that, it will more be supportive of infranodal. Obviously, for a nodal, it will be a very large PR. So that's not the case. So this is more supportive of around 160 and infranodal. So this points go in the favor of infranodal or infrasion. So PR interval of the conducted compulsive is constant. We have seen that it's conducted is constant, but the RP is varying. So I mark the RP. So you think they are varying or they are fixed? They look fixed. There's not a gross variation. Okay. Uh, it's not a gross variation. They kind of look fixed. So there is not varying RP. So this not pose in the favor of nodal. So it, sometimes mixed picture do come. Presence of Venki back. So if you get to get a chance to see Venki back elsewhere on the CG, then it is more suggestive of a nodal. Okay, less like in Holter. So you can advise on Holter, look for Holter. And if you can see Venki back and no advanced AV block, then this is most likely a nodal. Okay. So an improvement of block with atrophy. So an exercise because the sinus rate will get more fast and because it's already going two into uh, two into one. So if the sinus rate gets fast faster, so what happens is obviously the conduction system will get more non-conducted beads and then that will be a clear. And anything improves with that, uh, the node is more like. So this opposite case is massage. So what is a massage so what when you do a curtain massage so you will decrease the p2p rate so the p the next p will get the time uh, because it will be coming a bit later and there's a chance that the conduction system recovers so this means that if it from recovers with the bradycardia it is more suggestive of uh, infra nodal okay so sometimes they ask you the question in the opposite way so you have also have to know that I think uh, all clear over here. So these are the steps which you need to do. Okay, so let's go through these ECGs. So this is again a real ECG, uh, 34 years old female uh, who had some insect bite and had developed palpitations. Any thoughts on this? What's happening? It's a bit tricky slide, I must say, but it's fast shot. Oh, sorry, fast. It's a fast shot, sir. Uh, I can't okay. appreciate the P wave in the beat one, but Good. it looks like two P waves are there. It looks like yet a flood of the two to one. Yes, great. So I just wanted uh, to know that anybody who says VT, because it looks like this is a broad, bizarre, looks VT, but uh, very, very good you pick up uh, the right ECG. So you can see over here, it's not that broad. In these leads, you are seeing it, there is a broadness because of conduction delays, but over here, this doesn't support VT. It's very, very narrow. Look at in V2 as well. And you can see a very clear P waves, uh, preceding P wave, uh, QRS. So this is a tachycardia. Obviously, differentials of SVT will come into picture in this case. Okay, so you can write SVT with aberration. So or in lead V2, you might see some P waves uh, over here, here, which thinks, which we think might be because of atrial tachycardias or flutter uh, going on. Okay, but we uh, definitely have to look into this further. The thing is, this is not VT. So don't write VT. Uh, it's an SVT with aberrancy or Bandavraj block because we don't have any sinus G with us. Okay, uh, I think it's clear now. Uh, don't write PT, please. Okay, the thing is, look at all the leads before jumping to the diagnosis. Look at all the evidences. These are conduction delays which might occur with aberrancy. Okay. 
so although uh, over here it was not that broad but somehow and in these ecgs there was some kind of production delays so this is not a very common ecg that is seen uh, usually with bundle branch it is a pure broad but there are some kind of localized conduction delays so but this is not vt that's for sure so let's move forward so this was the hints over here there are the p waves okay again a uh, very common ecg you might have seen this ecg as well so i'll not give you the history just give the diagnosis then we can move on extensive anterior valve mass is sp elevation tom to tom to stone sp elevation and anterior leads as well as the uh, lateral leads and sp depression in both three and every with tachycardia we are prolonged issues good so you see there are a lot of things going on so uh, this is this was an mi you can see very gross st elevations okay you can see elevations with the q waves being formed here here and this is a very huge st elevation okay and uh, even in one avl again you can see st elevation okay there is pr a bit prolongish okay it's not uh, that but still it's not small as well as well so it's a bit prolongish pr so this was anterior wall mi and this was a uh, right bundle being formed kind of because uh, you can see it was a qs pattern a typical uh, pattern for right bundle because it the width is broad you see it's not narrow it's a broad so this means the septal branches are getting affected so it's it more likely is a proximal disease more commonly you will expect a lien more proximally in led so it is a pretty straight forward but sometimes it can be get confused so i just put it over here just to uh, make you see the ccd okay sir, uh, one question here sir can sure. we uh, commit that you know that along with the st elevation uh, this is a kind of right fascicular block also the right bundle entry of fascicle with the pr Sure, sure. Yes, you can write fascicular block because you can see a right bundle and you can see an A A V F is negative, so a fascicular is being affected. Okay, so the thing is, uh, left anterior descending artery splices the fascicles and the right bundle, the septal branches. So you know, you should know knowing the anatomy and the profusion of that. So you can write. Uh, yes, uh, that should be written because they are positive. They are. Present in this ECG, so I think you should write. So anterior wall MI with conduction hysteresis. Okay, I think it's pretty straightforward. You just have to pick the MI. That's just pretty straightforward. Okay, so these are the hints. 